Now, the two Canadian ladies who were kidnapped last week in Kumase have been rescued by the police. Lauren Patricia Catherine Tilly, 19, and Bailey Jordan Chitley, uh, 20, were rescued last night in Sawaba, a suburb of Kumase. A statement signed by Information Minister Kojo Pong Kroma Wednesday morning indicated the rescue operation was carried out by national security operatives in the early hours of Wednesday, June 12. The statement adds details of the operation and ongoing effort at rescuing other girls would be made available in a press briefing on Wednesday. The two ladies were reportedly forced into a vehicle at about 8.20 p.m. on June 4. They had stepped out of the apartment at Silver Spring in Kumase. One person, an Uber driver who drove the girls around town, was subsequently engaged to assist the police in the rescue efforts. A team of experts from Canada and the United Kingdom later arrived in Ghana to assist national security operatives with investigations. The latest development comes less than 24 hours after the Information Ministry had issued a statement dismissing concerns about general insecurity and a possible terror threat in the country. The statement, which was signed by Information Minister Kojo Pong Kroma, said Ghana's safety and risk profiles remained largely unchanged despite recent events in the sub-region. That statement was in reaction to security alerts issued by foreign missions, including the Canadian Embassy in Ghana. This latest incident, though good news, has led many to question why it has taken so long to find the Takrata girls and whether the police is putting in the same effort to rescue them. And let's stay on that subject a while longer. And we've been joined on the phone lines by uh, the um, Kennel Festus Abuaji. He's a security analyst on what this means for Ghana and its international relationship uh, with other countries. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much for your time. Hello, Colonel Festa Sabwaji, can you hear me? We seem to be having a challenge with our lines there. We can hear Colonel Festa Sabwaji. We want to um, find out from him what he makes of this development. And clearly, uh, it is some good news regarding the fact that they've been rescued and uh, they are safe. That's what we are told. We are also told they are on their way to Accra for further examination. Uh, Colonel, good afternoon, if you can hear me. Yeah, good afternoon. Great. Uh, thank you for joining us on TV3. To start with, there is a th there are varied reactions regarding the rescue of these girls. In as much as that is good news, what do you make of the, the, the fact that we, there was foreign aid in finding them? That's from the UK and the uh, Canadian authorities. I didn't get you well, but obviously we should all be happy that we have found the girl and brought this incident to a, to a close, to an end, without any harm, I suppose, to, to the two girls. And as it were also to have redeemed uh, our image, both at home as well as uh, within the international community. Right. Um, the people who are talking about this have also raised concerns about why it seems the, there is a, a trend that if it's a foreign national that is kidnapped or abducted, our security agencies are able to find them. Talk about the Indian man, then there was an Estonian uh, diplomat. Now we have two Canadian girls who ha were also uh, kidnapped, but they've all been found. But the three Takradi girls who were abducted in 2018, August, have still not been found. What do you make of this? Well, I think circumstantially speaking, those who are making that argument um, have um, grounds to, to make that argument. But otherwise, the cases involving the foreigners and the kidnapping of the foreigners and those of the girls are substantially different. In addition, we also need to accept that in the case of the girls, we compromise the information and or the intelligence 
the moment that through corruption or otherwise, we allowed one of the key suspects to break jail for quite a number of days and to compromise whatever evidence that could have helped the police to have followed on the tail of the culprit a bit more speedily. Mm. So yes, on the surface of it, it would appear that uh, we have been quite proactive in arresting the perpetrators involved in the kidnapping of the foreigners and not have been too successful in the case of our own girls. But I think we need to give the benefit of doubt to, to the police in this case, to the extent that the police should also accept uh, responsibility mm. for having uh, compromised the initial stages of the kidnapping. And, and staying on that same tangent, would you say that, um, yes, our security uh, apparatus has the capability to find the three Takradi girls, or it looks like now we need to fall on the foreign nationals to help us in rescuing them or finding them? Well, I've argued elsewhere that there would have been a certain extent to which the presence and the involvement of the Canadian experts, security and our intelligence experts, in the case involving the Canadians, might have influenced um, the processes in finding the culprits. We're not sure of exactly what role they played, but I want to believe that in sharing their expertise and in placing at the disposal of our authorities some uh, amount of support mm. uh, that would have helped although a greater part of the speed work especially the operations to actually arrest the culprit would have come from us right however we need to also recall that in the case of the Takwadi girls we are already also receiving support from some of our foreign partners okay but it seems as I've argued, the processes are different, the cases are different, uh, the dynamics are different. Right. And therefore, there is no room in drawing conclusions that once you have found a culprit involved in the abduction or kidnapping of foreigners, mm. the same can apply to, let's say, Ghanaian nationals. Okay. Right. We'd have to leave you here for now, but thank you very much for making time to speak with us. Um, uh, Kennel Festus Abwaji is a security analyst helping us understand the implications uh, regarding the rescue of these Canadian girls. Earlier, we actually spoke to Professor Vladimir Nchidanso, uh, who is a, relations, uh, a foreign relations expert and also security analyst, uh, before the, uh, the Canadian girls were rescued. This is what he had to say regarding how this would affect the relationship between Ghana and Canada. Our relationship, no. Our image, yes. Businessmen will be watching. Should I go? Should I not go? Businessmen in Ghana will be watching. Should I put my money here or take my money and go away? So it, it brings about some hiccups a little. Ours is not that robust an economy. If it were, you will see the, the data showing or the market showing signs of hiccuping. But uh, our part of the world, we, we don't have that robust economy uh, having strong relationship with the outside world the way it should. Other than that, you will see, we see the market indices just showing that kind of caution. And talking about why there seemed to be the ability to rescue foreigners and not uh, the Takradi girls, uh, Professor Vladimir Chudanso asked that Ghanaians be patient with the security institutions because in such cases, patience is required. Patience. Yes, it's sad. It's, it's, it's unacceptable. But then, if you stampede the police, they will tell you stories. So you help them, rather, by leads. And then they themselves will start closing some uh, uh, leads, using new leads. Because, look, in terms of crime detection, you need the patience. If you don't, you stampede yourself into arresting the innocent. And the law is an ass. The law, as we know it everywhere in the world, is, has a certain principle. It is better to allow 1,000 culprits to go free 
than put one person, innocent person, inside. So if you don't have your facts, you know, you may arrest several people. That one is an example. We arrested several people believing that they killed the king. We believe that somebody was holding the shoulder, another was holding the head. So these are the people who killed the person. When we reach the court, no evidence. So you see, patience. That situation. But then there's no amount of witchery or prayers that will bring them back apart from that patience that will lead us to the correct arrest of the persons who did that. 